Hey everybody, Bill Grismore here with 27 Virtual. Thank you very much for joining me. In this video presentation, we're looking at prerequisites for NSX. We're gonna talk about NSX just a little bit in this video, but our main focus in this particular presentation is on the concept of VM kernel NICs. What they are, why we have them, how they work, and some different scenarios and how it would look. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what we got here. So in this video, what I decided to do is break it out into three different examples. So we know that we have a standard switch and we know that we have the actual VM kernel itself, our, our ESXi operating system, if you will. Probably a, a bad thing to call it. I don't think people at VMware would really like to hear it called that, but we'll just say that's kind of showing the, the flow there of my operating system. Like this is my, this is my hypervisor. How's that? That's our ESXi hypervisor. There's a better term. So the, the simplest way to, to explain this would be during the installation of your ESXi host, you're going to get a VM kernel NIC. I'm going to create that NIC right there. I'm just going to take it and kind of grab it like this and just drop it into the kernel. Think of it as like a network card that's just plugging in there, right? Just like that. Now this VM kernel NIC, I'm going to label it VMK for short NIC. This VM kernel NIC is basically plugging, if you will, into the kernel, right? It's kind of similar to having a virtual machine sitting over here that would have a VNIC in it, and the VNIC would plug into my VM network default port. You know, in the previous video, we talked about how there is a default port that we can plug things into, or a default port group. And this VM can plug into that, into that port in that port group called VM network. And I would assign a VLAN tag to this and I would make sure that VLAN is trunked out. And the name of the switch by default would be vSwitch0. Now a couple of basic things. I can't rename the switch, but I can rename the port group. I can also put properties on my switch that get inherited to the port groups. The VNIC and the VM can then plug into a port in the port group on that standard switch zero. And it's called a standard switch. Later on, we're going to talk about virtual distributed switches. Now I have this VM kernel NIC down here. And then this is my really my focus. And here's what I want to point out is what you get by default is one VM kernel NIC and you can choose on this one VM kernel NIC, what processes that you want to use on this one VM kernel NIC. So what we get by default is management. So I'm going to assign an IP address to my server during installation, my ESXi host, I shouldn't use the word server. I'm going to apply an IP address to my ESXi host during installation. Let's just say it's something like 192.168.10.101. We'll give it a mask uh, 24, if I can grab that right there. And then we're going to also give it a gateway. And we'll say that gateway is 192.168.10.2. Now on this host, we have one TCP IP stack because we are on host version 5.1 or older. And that will change when we get to 5.5. So one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this in this video is we talk about how there's a requirement that our ESXi host and our vCenter should be 5.5 or higher uh, before we do an NSX install. So one of the limitations we had in 5.1 is we only had one TCP IP stack no matter what. So what that would mean is I'd only get one gateway. Now I could have multiple IP addresses, but I could only have one gateway. Now in this example, what would happen uh, by default when you install your host, you get another port group here. And this port group is what my VM NIC would plug into. If I kind of draw my wire from the VM kernel NIC into this port here in this port group. And then I would have a VM kernel port they always refer to it as a VM kernel port for management. Now, technically under the hood, it's a port group, 
of one. <laughs> it's like I have a port group, but I've only got one thing plugged into it. So we just kind of refer to it as a VM kernel port for management. Another thing that can be a little bit confusing about this, if you've never done this before, what you'll notice if you're in the vSphere GUI, whether you're in the web client or in the uh, C Sharp client, you'll actually see the IP address here. 192.168.10.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
uh, leave him out because he's he's kind of special. He's got some other requirements. We'll leave FT logging out of it for now. And this is all limited to one TCP IP stack, which means that we have just one gateway. In other words, vMotion cannot have a gateway and IP storage cannot have a gateway. Only management will have a gateway. All right, now the other the other option for configuring these VM kernel NICs is if we, we just kind of change the picture just a little bit, we still have two adapters in our hosts. We make the switch a little bit bigger and we're going to have, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to have a VM network for management. We're going to have a VM kernel port group, a VM kernel port for management. So we still have the VM network. And we have the VM kernel port for management, VM kernel port for management. But what's going to be different is instead of having just one VM kernel NIC, we're going to have three VM kernel NICs, one for management, one for vMotion, one for IP storage. But my host is still 5.1. My host is still 5.1. That means I have just one TCP IP stack. That means the only one of these guys that can have a gateway is management. So management would get an IP address, 192.168.10.101 slash 24. And he would also have a gateway though, 192.168.10.2. So this would be my VM kernel NIC for management. I would then have another VM kernel NIC for vMotion. So now I have a separate VM kernel NIC, which means I can bind an IP address to it. So say 192.168.20.101 slash 24. But you'll notice we have a gateway here, no gateway here. Same as what we had on the left. I can now also have a separate VM kernel NIC for IP storage. And we'll assign a separate IP address here. Now, IP storage also has some considerations, kind of like FT logging does. Let's, I got rid of FT logging. But IP storage, uh, IP storage is definitely something I would give a different IP address to here, like this. Now, what I would do now is create three different port groups each with a different VLAN assigned. So over here, we'll say management was on, would I use 10, right? So we'll say this is VLAN 10. We assign VLAN 10 to this port group. We're gonna assign VLAN 20 to this port group. We're gonna assign VLAN 30 to this port group. And then we're gonna have ports that these VM kernel NICs plug into. So these are my ports. And if we just kind of draw the little virtual wire, this is going to plug in here. This is going to plug in here. And this guy is going to plug in here. In my switch, I would still have my uplinks, my VM NICs here. VM NIC 0 and VM NIC 1, or uplink 0, uplink 1, whatever you want to call them. It's got like two or three different names here. So we put 0 and 1 up here. These are uplinks to get out to the physical network. And I basically have the exact same thing I had on the left. The only difference is, is that I have separate VM kernel NICs. I have separate IP addresses for each one of those VM kernel NICs. So I have separate VM kernel NICs. So I can bind an IP address separately to each one. Now I still just have one TCP IP stack though. One TCP IP stack, that means I have just one gateway. All right, it's just one gateway. And then the last one over here is gonna be another 5.1 host still. But in this case, I have four uplinks. Zero, one, two, and three. Now, with this one right here, what we're going to do is we're going to create, instead of one standard switch, we're going to create two standard switches. So we'll put one switch here, one switch here, 
Actually, let me be a little bit more creative with this so I can fit it all in. One switch here. We'll make it a little bit thinner there. Put one switch here. And we're going to put the VM network port group up here. We're going to put management up here. And we're going to go ahead and put vMotion up here. And I'm going to create a separate port group here just for IP storage. And I'm just going to just take these guys here. I'm going to just copy this if I can do this the way I want. Let me just grab it like this. going to work. I'm going to put this over here. And everything is the same. The only difference is I have two switches because I have four adapters. So I'm going to take zero and one and put it in this switch zero. Right? So this would be this would be zero and this would be one uplink or VM NIC zero and one uplink two or VM NIC two and uplink three or VM NIC three. Just like that. This would be switch zero. Again, I can't change the name of the switch and this would be now standard switch one. These are all standard switches. And then when I draw my lines here, uh, what would happen is I would have for management that was in black. So I'd have management up here. And I would just run this in like this. Management would just go like this. Again, management would still be on VLAN 10. Right? And then my vMotion, that would be red. vMotion would be here. And I would just run my virtual wire up here. Like this. Now what I've done is I've separated out my storage onto different adapters. And I might do that because I want my storage to perform optimally. And if I'm kind of doing old school with one gig adapters, I want to separate that out. And it's just, it may not be what we're doing today because uh, we're going to 10 gig adapters, but it's just kind of a good way to kind of explain how things work. Not that today necessarily you would do it that way. You may, you may do it this way. You may not. You may find customers that have it this way. It just kind of depends. So you can kind of see the evolution. One VM kernel NIC with all the processes running on one IP address. Separate VM kernel NICs with an IP address bound to each one of the VM kernel NICs, but everything's going into one switch. Same exact VM kernel NIC situation. We have three VM kernel NICs with a separate IP address bound to each one. But this time, because we have two additional uplinks, we have spread that between vSwitch 0 and vSwitch 1. And that allows my storage traffic to leverage these adapters, right? And I can do some interesting things with storage, which I don't really want to get into because this is not a storage video. But, you know, you can do things for those of you that know vSphere, right? You can go in here and you can have, you know, one active and one standby. And I can do some interesting things where some of the traffic is going to leverage uh, uh, uplink 2 and some would leverage 3. Those type of things. In all three cases, in all three cases, because my host is 5.1, I only have one TCP IP stack in each case, which means I can only have one gateway. I have one TCP IP stack. That means I have one gateway. Multiple IP addresses, multiple VM kernel NICs, but one gateway. All right, so that kind of wraps up how those VM kernel NICs work. Now in the next video, uh, we're going to take a look at the uplinks. And then I have a video after that one I'm going to follow up with that's going to talk a little bit more about what's going to happen with NSX and why we want to go from 5.1 to 5.5 with NSX, with VM kernel NICs. So that wraps up that video. I hope that, that helps out a little bit. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.